In part three of this series, Jake Whiteman of J Custom Knives will show you how to center and drill the holes perfectly on a knife with a hidden tank construction. <laughs> And if you watch all the way until the end, you'll get some dead simple pro tips on how to hold the micarta and the brass fittings during sanding. Just utilising the flat micarta now, I'll take that to the, uh, the work rest just to square it off just to make marking out the center much easier. So now I'm just gonna mark the center of the block with a scribe and a ruler from corner to corner to corner. The scribe is nowhere to be seen. I use a Sharpie pen. So just loosely, it doesn't matter too much because this block's not perfectly square in every proportion and we've got a lot of material to remove anyway. It's just if you can find the center, it just makes everything slightly easier. Now I'll show you a tip as well for drilling a square hole. So it's at a nice 90 degree angle. You take a square and run it across the top face, which you know is flat, and then mark with a Sharpie pen. You now have a line that's perfectly, whatever the word is, adjacent, perpendicular to the top. So I can use this to line up the drill press so I know that I'm gonna drill my tang slot in perfectly straight down from the top. A pillar drill and a drilling vise. Basically, pull it behind the drill bit. And you can get in really close and you can just tap this and move it around so you, the line that you've drawn is perfectly in line with the edge of the drill bit. And that way you know when you bring the drill down, you're gonna go really nice and straight. Drop the drill back down and then you're ready to drill it in. Nice slow speed. I'm gonna go 470 RPM on this, just so we don't overheat the timber too much start pecking the drill bit through the timber. Now we've got a nice hole, nice and centered, which runs all the way down. We can use this to insert a dowel for keeping the tang straight. Yeah, this is by far my favorite method of fitting handles. So then the, the dowel, we're gonna sort the dowel in the middle and remove some material in the center so it was sandwiched the tang. And I can tell by how snug that is that I need to remove more material from the dowel itself as well as some of the length. So I'll take it back out and thin it back down a bit. Right, I'm confident that it's going to be not far off now. So I'll just take this to the flush at the top and mark here where I need to remove it. So now, with just with the slot in there, you can just really easily position where the tang is going to go and it will just, with a bit of luck, sit right in place. With very little play side to side, that way you can get everything lined up very easily. You've got a nice slot. Nice room for epoxy, but not too snug that you're having to hammer it in or pull it off too hard each time. So what I'll do to lock these in place, so I'll take them out. They're not gonna come out because I want them to. Just pull these out, affix them with some super glue to keep them in line while we're shaping the handle. Would you believe me if I told you this never happened when I'm not being filmed? <laughs> so the way I get these in nice and square is I just, I'll slide one in to begin with. I'll hold it onto the tang of the knife. Just put a very small dab of super glue on there. This isn't, isn't a permanent fixture. Obviously everything's gonna be bedded with epoxy before it's finished. So I just slide one in like this and then lift up to the side that I want it to stick to. And I, hopefully I can take the knife out and leave the dowel in place. Can then place the other one in, line it up with the tang small dab of super glue, slide it into place and lift into the opposite direction. And I can take the tang back out and you've got your dowel in there which will keep your slot square. Bit of activator just to keep it in place and they shouldn't be moving at all. It was a 
full-time blacksmith, he's very, very talented in what he does. His decorative work that he does is absolutely, absolutely fantastic. Yeah, he's on Instagram, at the London Blacksmith. Yeah, Will Barker, his name is, absolutely fantastic at what he does. He does a lot of content on his Instagram as well, uh, smashing things under the power hammer, which is always entertaining. He's taught me how to move metal under a hammer very well. Taught me how to use the power hammer, how to swing at the anvil as well, uh, without injuring myself, and also just more effective ways to do it. I've been making knives about three years now, about three years. It was a hobby for the first year, and then I took a few months out because I injured myself, and then I thought I'd start really learning how to do it after my surgery. And it was more of actually finding a way that I could make money whilst sitting down and working on my own terms. I couldn't hold a, a proper job for quite a long time because I couldn't stand up too long, I couldn't sit down too long, I couldn't be too active, but I couldn't be too lazy because if I, it was just, it was really, really impossible to find any job that would fit that balance. So I was hoping that I could start working for myself, which I eventually did. Eventually made uh, J Custom Knives into a sustainable business and hopefully this year, fingers crossed, I won't have to do any other work and I can just live off the knives entirely. I found quite a good niche, yeah. I, um, being a chef before I uh, made knives meant that I already had, I don't know how, how I'd describe it, I was already within that community on Instagram. So I, there was already a lot of chefs that I, I was following and there were a lot of chefs that were following me anyway. So when I branched from selling knives on my personal account to actually using J Custom Knives, I took quite a few chefs across as followers to begin with. Having chefs showing my knives being used in professional kitchens gave people the reassurance that they were of a professional quality because it's all well and good for a knife to look good. And I could make a knife uh, that looks fantastic on Instagram and it would look absolutely amazing. Uh, and if you picked it up in your hand and tried to cut anything, it wouldn't do, wouldn't do anything at all. It's completely pointless. And uh, I was making this joke with Luca um, because he had scuffed one side of his blade. And I said to him, I said, it's fine. I said, it's just an Instagram knife. And he said, what do you mean? I said, well, it looks perfect on one side, so the other side's shit. It doesn't, you know, it, <laughs> it's, you, nobody needs to know. Looks great on social media, but it, <coughs> you, you're, not, you're only going to notice in person. But yeah, I think the hardest thing is convincing people that your product's worth what you say it is. I'm confident in the knives that I make that they perform excellently in, in, the, in kitchen conditions. It's, it's always easy to get feedback from chefs. Chefs are always quite happy. I mean, if you're really desperate for feedback, you just say to a chef, I'm going to send you this knife. Can you please tell me what you think of it? And they're going to go, oh, sharp things. And they're going to use it many, many times. Time to flatten the top of the block before we stick the ferrule on. So we go back to our surface plate and just remove any burrs from the drilling. Get this nice and flush. So it's now really nice and flat. We need to rough up this brass as well to get this to stick. Before you do that, it's always beneficial just to mark where the top and bottom of the handle is so you know it's gonna fit when you put it back. So again, just scratch it up. nice and scratched, which hopefully, and I say hopefully, because it doesn't always mean anything, hopefully that'll give a better bond for the super glue, just to hold it in place. Put the tang in, make sure it still fits nice and flush, work out where we want it, lift this up slightly, just a couple of dabs of super glue in each corner, pull it down, hold it in position and take the knife out. Utilize the spray just to lock everything in place and hopefully not glue your fingers to it. And then you're ready to take this back to the grinder, square it off and start shaping. Want to win this knife? Check out ukbladeshow.com or click the link in the description to find out more. If you want to know when the next video is out, like, subscribe and make sure you've clicked the bell notification. I appreciate your support.